Hi, this is Joe Serta, president of NAFA Indiana, welcoming you to the July edition of NAFA Indiana This Month, your video newsletter. This month, we celebrated the birth of our nation. I hope you all got out to enjoy some Independence Day activities. July 4th is the day we celebrate our inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. As financial advisors, it is our responsibility to ensure our clients enjoy those rights by giving them sound financial advice. As we celebrate the uniqueness of this nearly 250-year-old experiment in government of the people, by the people, and for the people, I want to emphasize people. Ours is a representative democracy, and our lawmakers can't properly represent us unless we make our opinions known. That's what makes NAFA the most effective advocacy group in the financial services industry. We make our voices heard. And to that end, NAFA held a great virtual congressional conference in May. Next year, we expect to be able to meet our lawmakers in person. In the meantime, it is important for all of our members to stay in contact with their representatives at the state and national level. It is only by developing and maintaining those contacts that we can be effective advocates for our clients and our industry. This past May, Governor Holcomb announced the state's longest serving insurance commissioner, Stephen Robertson, would be retiring. Shortly thereafter, in an unusual move, Governor Holcomb announced he was promoting the Department of Insurance General Counsel, Amy Beard, to insurance commissioner. We are honored to have Commissioner Beard join us for one of her first public appearances since taking office. Commissioner Beard, welcome to NAFA Indiana this month. Thank you, President Serta. I appreciate taking the time to talk with you and Indiana NAFA this morning, and I appreciate your all's time as well. I just wanted to mention some things about the Department of Insurance and my new role as insurance commissioner. Right now, I'm just getting into the seat of things and working with the DOI team. And one of the great things about the DOI is we have a great team here. The first few months internally, we'll be working together to develop the IDOI's uh, mission and vision. I see the IDOI asking, how can we help? How can we be available and continue to provide great government service to in the, uh, industry and consumers? The IDOI will continue to keep going strong with its everyday operations and continue to ensure that Indiana's insurance market is a great place to do business and that policyholder obligations are honored. I want to make sure that we're building a regulatory environment that is fair, functional, and efficient. I want to bring together the expertise of the IDOI team to the forefront. I welcome conversations with stakeholders, such as NAFA, to have open lines of communication on issues or topics of interest. We want to make sure to use our internal insights to help businesses operate, not just in the short term quarterly goal setting approach, but also with a decades long lens from which businesses can thrive. In addition to my legal understanding, coupled with my experience as an insurance regulator, I'm comfortable with technology and its advancements. The IDOI is looking at streamlining some of these things, one example of which is just streamlining everyday operations by implementing things such as DocuSign for electronic filings and documents. So I welcome any member of NAFA and thank you, President Serta and members for letting me speak with you all today. I welcome all of you to do the same in the future. Stop by the Department of Insurance. We have a great DOI team here and I hope to continue conversations and look forward to working with NAFA Indiana in the future. Commissioner Beard, thank you for joining us for NAFA Indiana this month. We look forward to having a productive relationship with you and the Department of Insurance. We often talk about July and August as being the dog days of summer, and we know a lot of our members spend a significant amount of time outdoors with their pets this time of the year, as witnessed by the following video montage.
Pets bring a lot of joy into our lives, but they can also bring a lot of expenses. To address that risk, pet insurance has become increasingly popular. Joining us to tell us a bit about pet insurance is NAFA Indiana member, Andrea Harbin. Andrea, welcome to NAFA Indiana this month. Thanks for having me, Joe. It's a pleasure to be here. Andrea, over the last few years, I've noticed pets are living longer, but just like people, in their later years, they can develop medical conditions that are quite costly. Yes, Joe, and because of that, many people are choosing to purchase pet medical insurance. Pet medical insurance is designed to cover the unexpected cost of a pet that an owner cannot plan. Policies provide for the medical expenses that are related to things like accidents, illness, and injury. Um, pet medical in insurance is a growing industry and there are eligibility guidelines in order to get a pet medical insurance policy. For example, typical guidelines would be to enroll a pet between the ages of birth and a certain age, which is typically about 14 years old. So it would, the pet would typically need to be less than 14 years old. So before its 14th birthday, there is a pre-existing condition exclusion for the policies. So older pets, the premiums would be much higher and the pets would also be subject to that pre-existing condition exclusion. So you can write a policy through a local agent, somebody that handles pet medical insurance, or you can get the policies directly from the servicing company. One of the biggest servicing companies in the United States uh, for pet medical insurance is called Trupanion, and they work with local agents as well as they have availability online that people can go directly to their site and get a policy if they wanted to. Coverage is available in all 50 states. Some of the typical types of coverage that are available for pet medical insurance would include a 90% coverage for any type of injuries or illnesses. So you would still be responsible for usually about 10% that you would pay out of your own pocket. They typically don't have any payout limits. So that's a good thing. Um, you know, there's no cap on the coverage. The deductibles are customizable. So you can typically get, make you decide how much premium you wanna pay by choosing the amount of deductible that you want to go with. Anywhere from say $0 on up to about $1,000 is a typical deductible for pet medical insurance. But again, you get to choose. There is also a per condition deductible for the lifetime of your pet. So depending on what condition they have, you may have a deductible specifically for that condition for your pet's lifetime. The good thing is that you can go to any veterinarian in the United States, and a lot of times they include Canada and Puerto Rico in these policies. And you do have the option of allowing the company pay the veterinarian directly so that you don't have to mess with filing the claim yourself. Uh, when your pet is sick or injured, the company typically covers the actual veterinary costs that are incurred for the treatment. And some of those typical types of costs would include things that are such as the procedures and the therapies or diagnostics, surgery, advanced therapies, medications, hospitalization, prescription food, dietary supplements, herbal therapy, orthotics, prosthetics, carts. Those are typically all covered under the policy. Some of the exclusions when you have a pet medical insurance policy, it doesn't pay for the things that are planned, so to speak. So a tip, just a regular exam fee, uh, your deductible obviously isn't covered. Sales tax, if there is anything like that, wellness, preventive care, pre-existing conditions, and incidents that occur during the policy's waiting period. There's always going to be some type of waiting period after you purchase the policy before the coverage will begin. Elective, cosmetic, preventive procedures, those types of things are not covered. And an example would be dew claw removal, not covered under the policy. So it's similar to other insurance where things that are planned that happen normally are typically not covered and things that happen 
unexpectedly are covered. Routine wellness care, not covered. And again, that's just because they're things that could be planned out ahead of time. Hereditary conditions and are diseases and disorders that are inherited genetically. A signs or symptoms of these conditions can take days, weeks, months, or sometimes even years to manifest. So the policy will cover these hereditary and con congenital conditions if there are no pre-existing signs or symptoms. So at the time that somebody writes the policy, as long as there were no pre-existing signs or symptoms, then even hereditary and congenital medical conditions would be covered by the policy. There is something called a recovery and a complementary care rider that is an option that could be added to the policy. And the types of benefits that the rider would cover would be things like rehabilitative therapy, acupuncture, behavioral modification and therapy, chiropractic, homeopathy, hydrotherapy, and naturopathy. All of those are optionally available with a recovery and complementary care writer, it's called. So you would pay extra to have that, but it's good to know that it's an option. There are a few other writers that may be available on your policy if necessary. There's a breeding pet writer. So if somebody who does do breeding, there is a writer available for that. And it, there's going to be certain rules associated with how it works, but just know that there is coverage for that. And there is a pet owner assistance writer, which is also something that could be added. And this writer includes coverage for five important non-medical situations that a pet owner is at risk of. So for example, third party property damage, advertising and reward for lost pets, boarding fees coverage if the owner is hospitalized, trip cancellation costs due to a pet emergency, cremation or burial fees if the pet passes due to an accident, and this rider can be added or removed at any time. So again, something that is available in addition if somebody was interested in that. The coverage continues, it keeps renewing until you tell the company that you don't want it anymore. So that is another good thing. You don't have to like prove eligibility. It just, it is a uh, continually renewing policy. And when it comes to claim, the company always has the rights to deny a claim, but they do have an appeals process in order to get coverage. And also the company typically will work directly with the veterinarians, which is always helpful um, to have something like that. It's a good policy to have. It's good to know that the option is there. I definitely think if you have pets, it's something to look into to decide whether it makes sense for your family, for your budget, and for your pet. Uh, that's about it, Joe. Thank you so much. Thanks, Andrea. That's real food for thought. Pets often become members of the family, so it makes sense to insure them just like one. While we have all been living in a pandemic where the main medical issue was COVID-19, other diseases have continued to have their deleterious effect on our clients' health and finances. Not the least of these is cancer. I recently saw an interview where Indiana's own Jerome Adams revealed that while he was leading the fight against the pandemic as the U.S. Surgeon General, his wife was struggling with cancer. While most of us have health insurance that covers cancer treatments, there are many financial risks that health insurance doesn't address. Joining us today is Michael Gendy of Guarantee Trust Life to talk about the cancer insurance and how that can work in a family's risk management portfolio. Welcome to NAFA Indiana this month, Mike. Thank you very much, Joe. Sure do appreciate it. Now that we're all required to have health insurance and health insurance necessarily covers cancer treatment, what would be the purpose of purchasing a separate cancer insurance policy? So what happens is people think that, all right, hey, I've got insurance, so when I get cancer, everything will be covered, except that it ends up that with deductibles and uh, out-of-pocket expenses, it can cost the average person well into the $20,000 per year range to battle cancer, not counting what the insurance company is paying for. And you put it into your full financial picture. Well, who has 
$20,000 laying around that they can just spend and not feel it. And that's where indemnified cancer insurance, whether it be lump sum or whether it be a monthly payment, so on and so forth, can be so important for somebody's financial portfolio. Thanks. I hadn't thought about many of those expenses. I have a friend who is in this industry whose wife had cancer a few years ago. He said he essentially had to take almost a year off to be his wife's caregiver during her treatment. During that year, his revenues were negligible. Would cancer insurance have helped him? Absolutely, Joe. And that's, and that's really where it becomes so vitally important. As an agent, hey, every one of us needs to offer cancer insurance to our clients because of this reason. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, hey, you know what I got to do today? I need to run out, get my hair cut, uh, go buy some groceries, maybe stop at the health club. Oh, and then I think I'll go buy some cancer insurance. People don't even know that cancer insurance is available. So the only way that they actually become a client of uh, and get their own policy is by an agent being so honorable as to bring up cancer insurance to them. One of the best ways to bring up cancer insurance is to just say to your client, hey, Bob, hey, Mary, who do you have your cancer insurance with now? And what's going to happen is nine out of 10 times, Bob and Mary are going to say, hey, I don't have any cancer insurance at all. And then you say to the client, you say, well, what experience do you have dealing with cancer, you or anybody you know? And then you get them talking about that experience because everybody knows somebody, there's somebody very close to them that has had cancer and had to deal with it. And then you get into the expenses, et cetera. But where cancer insurance is so vital. So you mentioned your friend where their spouse had cancer. And so you end up having to take care of your spouse. And in doing so, you're missing a tremendous amount of work. And we all know that, hey, when you miss work, you do not get paid. When you don't get paid, you don't have any income coming in, but yet you still have the same exact expenses that you had prior to your spouse getting cancer. And not only those same exact expenses, but then they increase tremendously because you have your deductibles, like, you know, Medicare, Advantage, for instance, you have a 20% deductible on your medicine, which is considered chemotherapy and radiation. So that can get into the thousands of dollars each month right there. Then you start figuring into travel expenses. It's not unusual when you're battling cancer where you have to travel. Maybe you have to go to uh, Minnesota for the Mayo Clinic or any of the other places. And you have to get a hotel room every now and then. And then you have to eat out because you're not making food in your hotel. And even if you're not traveling, take into account that, hey, the, your spouse who has cancer, whether it be the husband or the wife, they're all exhausted. They don't have the energy to be cooking at home. You're exhausted because you're trying to work full time and take care of your spouse. So you don't have the energy to cook at home. So you have to do what? You have to order out. So now your food expense has just doubled. It's the out-of-pocket expenses that cause the financial ruin when somebody goes through a cancer treatment. The good news that I received last week, my brother who's been battling cancer for a year and a half, gone through numerous surgeries and all of that, was just announced to be cancer-free. So that's great news. But it's cost him and his wife thousands upon thousands of dollars in out-of-pocket expenses that people just don't realize how high they are. Just take, for instance, you're working, let's say you're making $75,000 a year, and now you're only going to be able to work half that amount of time because you're going in for taking your spouse in for treatments every other, uh, you know, twice, twice per week, et cetera, et cetera. So now your income goes from 75,000 down to 35,000. Or let's say that it's you that are going through the cancer treatment. So now your income goes down to zero. That is why it's so important to offer a cancer plan for every one of your clients. At least bring it up to them. Let them be the ones to say, no, I don't want it. Let me make sure that I understand. Are these reimbursement or indemnity policies? Just to clarify, you're asking whether these policies are reimbursement, which would mean that, hey, you get reimbursed for your expenses, or are they indemnity policies, which means there's a set dollar amount that you get indemnified. 
which is a better way to go when it comes to a cancer policy. And these are indemnity policies. So for instance, what that means. So we're, we here at GTL, we've been in the cancer business for a long time. And about a year and a half ago, we came out with a groundbreaking plan. It's a lump sum plan, which the client can receive up to $75,000 lump sum tax free. There's a whole bunch of plans like that on the market. But where our plan differs is that we also pay for genomic sequencing so that the client and their client's doctor will find out what is the mutated marker cell of that particular strain of cancer. And then the oncology experts will meet with the client and the client's doctor and let them know exactly what is the best way to treat this particular form of cancer to give them their best chance of surviving it. People that go through genomic sequencing typically live two to three times longer after diagnosis than people that go through just the general population approach to fighting cancer, which we call the GPA. And the general population approach to fighting cancer is, and we all know this, they go in, they cut the tumor out, and then they blast your body with toxic amounts of chemotherapy and radiation, because that's kind of like what has been the most that we know the best way to do it. Well, now with this genomic sequencing, it's a precise way of fighting cancer. The plan that we sell happens to be called precision care because it's precise. It will tell you, okay, we need to cut it out, cut the tumor out. But now what we want you to do is instead of this much chemotherapy, we want you to put this much chemotherapy, you know, a, a thimble full, but on this exact spot. And then we want you to take this three drug cocktail. By offering cancer insurance to your clients, you And I just can't emphasize this enough. You are doing an amazing thing for your clients because when they get cancer, it's too late at that point. They can't then go out and say, hey, I want to buy that policy from you now. Nope, too late. That's why it's up to us as agents to bring it up to them ahead of time. And again, I'm going to stress this one more time. How do you bring up a cancer policy? You just say to your client, to every one of your clients, everybody you meet, hey, who do you have your cancer insurance with? I don't have any. Well, who do you know that's had experience dealing with cancer? You just need to make that part of your DNA so that you're bringing that up to everybody. And then after you've sold cancer insurance for a few years, you're going to start getting this, uh, this file book of thank you letters that will literally bring tears to your eyes because your clients are so thankful you saved their house. You saved their children's college education fund because you brought up an indemnification cancer plan, a lump sum cancer plan where, and here's how ours works. You get cancer, invasive cancer, say you sign up for $75,000, you get invasive cancer, we write you out a check for $75,000 tax-free. And imagine what a difference that makes for somebody financially. Hey, it doesn't cure cancer to get that money, but what does help beat the cancer is our genomic sequencing, so you kind of get the two for one, But man, oh man, what a stress reliever that is when you can take away the financial pressure that cancer adds to a client's life. That's a great explanation. How can our members contact you? The best way to contact me, well, there's there's really two ways that are the best, phone or email. So I'm going to read you off my email address, which is M as in Michael, and then my last name, Gendy at gtlic.com. And then let me give you two phone numbers very quickly. Office number, direct line, 847-460-4751. And then my cell phone, 815-701-7034. And anytime I give out my cell phone to a large group, I always throw this codicil in there. Please call me on my cell phone during business hours. But if you're sitting in front of a client and it's Saturday night at 930 at night and you need a question answered in order to make a sale, man, pick up that phone and call me because I'm here, as is everybody else, all 300 people here at GTL. We're here for one reason. That's to serve you guys, our agents. And of course, when I say guys, I mean guys and gals. Thanks, Michael. That was a great explanation. It makes me realize how many gaps there are in our risk management programs that the industry has made an effort to address. Although many of you are taking some well-deserved time off this summer, 
your professional organization is still hard at work providing our members excellent programs. This month, the inimitable Charles Boyd of the Social Security Administration will present another of her excellent Social Security updates, July 15th, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. It's all virtual, so you can view this presentation from anywhere you have an internet connection. It's worth two hours of Indiana Insurance CE, but the information is priceless. August 17th through the 19th, NAFA will hold its 2021 Performance Plus Purpose National Conference. It's all virtual, so you won't have to travel to some distant location. Just settle back wherever you have an internet connection and enjoy the meeting. Don't miss this. We're expecting some major announcements. And the following week, don't forget our NAFA Indiana golf outing at the Golf Club of Indiana, August 26th. I look forward to this being a great event and the first time many of us have been together. It's our major fundraiser for the year, so we're making this special for you and for your guests. I know this has been a challenging year, but we're still NAFA strong because together we can take on anything. This past weekend, uh, we learned the sad news that legendary Jack Peckinpah passed away. Um, and uh, we were all very, very uh, shocked and sad uh, to lose him. Uh, the following is a tribute to, uh, to Jack. So Jack, are you aware we're having the NAFA Summit here this year? Sure am. I'm sick to death with much as a good town and it'll mark my 65th anniversary in the insurance I'll be darned. 65 years. 65 years. 65 years. Yeah. The biggest thing much has got going for is Ball State. Okay. Plus a lot of nice people here. And most of the people are excellent, good students and uh, good the citizens and so forth. So it's been a great town for me. We've been here since since I come up here to milk truck in 1946, been ever since. The Jack Peck and Paul Associate of the Year is given to those who earn this award. They are scored in three areas, personal production, industry involvement, and community involvement. Jack Peck and Paul, our colleague for whom this award is named, has set the bar for service to the industry and his clients. Having the word of Jack Peckinpah's name on it is beyond my wildest, wildest dreams. Well, some of what I like most about it is this change of ideas. You know, good speakers come in, get some ideas. When I go to a meeting, I like to pick up at least one or two ideas to take back home and use. Even at this stage of the game, I still try to do that. <laughs> 